Hey everyone, you're here on Extra Step, the new podcast. You're here with your boy K and Derwin. So you already know how we do. We're here to talk about sports, mainly basketball, have some nice debates, and actually see what the world's saying with the new trends that are coming out in the basketball world. We got a couple of topics that we wanted to talk about today on the podcast. Um, we're going to you know, go step by step to each one. Talk about him, have some nice debates. I know Duran's eager to get at me with uh, <coughs> his injury side, as I know wow. he's on. All right, all right. You but that, it, that's okay. You already throw it dirt. It's all good. Let's, yeah, right, let's yeah, do yeah, it. You know, and then we'll, we're going to answer some questions from Instagram after we're done having these discussions. Okay, so the first topic we're here to talk about today is the fact that LeBron, last week, uh, in his losing effort, though, passed LeBron, uh, Michael Jordan on the all-time scoring list for fourth. Uh, it's a big accomplishment for him, especially against, you know, past one of the guys that are one of the best players out there. Okay, so the first topic we have here is, again, talking about LeBron James. So, Derwin, now that LeBron has passed MJ on the all-time scoring list, what do you think this says for LeBron's legacy? And do you think now this actually puts him in discussion to be the GOAT of all time? Honestly, it's, it's like a big thing. Like, uh, I don't even know, like, how to say it. Just because, like, at the end of the day, like, I'll, I'll be able to tell my kids, like, you know, I got to see LeBron break, break Michael Jordan's, like, scoring title. I got to see him, you know, do what he did in the, uh, in the game of basketball. Uh, it's incredible. But, no, I don't, I still don't think that it makes him go, like, at the end of the day, like, I, I will bring this up right now, and then I'll throw it away because it's a ring conversation. But if a man goes to 6th Street and wins all of them, like, LeBron should have done the same thing, no? I mean, you got a good point there. I mean, yes. He went to 9th Street. Uh, 8th Street was like... I get it. Like, I get the talent. I, yeah. I understand all that. I get that Michael Jordan might have not faced the players that the game has today. But, like... It's not like LeBron was on a, any shit team. Like, I'll say, like... Okay, the 07 team? Easily. And, and last year's. The, the 2018 team. They were the worst teams. Like, anyone could... Like, I don't know if Michael could have done... What LeBron did last, those two seasons, but yeah. everywhere, yeah. everywhere else, mm. like look at what happened against Dirt. Like you know what I mean? Like, no, I feel you. No, LeBron's had his his L's in his career. I know he's you know had a lot of you know criticism towards towards him. You know the, how he handles things and how he's been as a player. Uh, but yo, the one thing I say what puts LeBron over my MJ is just the fact that yo, look what the man has done as a career. Right. No, like, if we're gonna go by rings, no, no. then we could we could have that true discussion of who's the go. But it, when it comes down between who's better, to me, it's not rings because rings really determines the team game. I, like I told you, right? that was my first one. That's it. It's not. But right. rings, like it, it doesn't define who you are. It helps with your legacy for sure. Oh hell yeah! Look, look at Charles Barkley. Like he could be a top five power forward of all time. What's eluding him? That one ring that he never got. That's what Shaq lets him know all the time on the show too. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, yeah, no, Shaq. I got four, know all you got time. zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, nah, if a man ever told me that, if, if we go, we going out to the parking lot scrapping it out. But, um, no, nah, I, I, that, that I understand. And like, like you said, rings, rings has to do a lot to your legacy. But, you know what, LeBron, the one thing that's great about him is that when you look at the teams he's played on, like even you stated out, like some of them are really trash. And that's we have to think about it, like what other player do we know in history that could do that on a team that was pretty much – not even talented at all to even make the playoffs because you can see where Cleveland is now, but he took them to the finals, right? Like, he's the type of player, when he leaves your team, your team doesn't win anymore, right? Like, all the teams he's left have always done worse, significantly worse. Like, Miami, yes, they had Dwayne Wade, they, they had Chris Bosh. The they made the playoffs, but they mm-hmm. weren't the same team, right? You're you look, right. But you look at MJ, he left Chicago when after 93, he, and they the were they were... Honestly, what a couple games away from being a conference finals? They, they should have won it. Then. Like if they were, if they were that close, you know. Then but they were a fifty-plus win team still. Miami wasn't. Miami okay. was like a lower conference. Like that's my point. Like LeBron has so much impact on the team he plays for. As much as yes, sometimes he takes his times off on defense. Mm-hmm. To me, to be that type of player on a team, that shows a lot of value. Like if 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 we had the if we actually give out the MVP trophy to the real MVPs, we all know LeBron would probably be the MVP every year. Because he's the most valuable player on any team he plays on. He's never been a sidekick. Not say MJ's been a sidekick. Obviously not. But, yo, MJ early in his career, yo, the man was barely making it past the second round, right? Okay, and then he got this, Scotty. This, and then he got Scotty. And then Scotty helped him right, be a okay, championship so. team, right? And, and LeBron's had his help, too. 
But to me, it's just kind of like, yo, at least LeBron. If you're going to talk about help and stuff, nah, nah, nah. We can't, we can't stop. Okay, first of all, look at LeBron. He made, he made from 2003 to 2010. That was his, like, young years. He made the finals once. Yeah. Uh, from, for Michaels, it would be the same thing. It would be from 83 to 90. Was the first time being in the playoffs? Yes, yeah. with Scotty. Like, with Scotty, like that was our ninety one, I guess. Yeah. So like that's th- for them both. Those were their young stages. They learned. They grew. Yeah, no fact. They they became into the players that their pride would would ex- like show them off. But at the end of the day, like he still went to like. <sighs> I know. I just I like I can't get away with that. I I understand because we got like we got like Bill Russell. He's got eleven. Bill Russell's yeah, he's got. 11. Like so we can't he, only ta- we can't only talk OG. about. We can't only talk about rings, but the no way facts. the way Michael did it, that's just it. That's no, no, the six straight, like that's something that you know we're gonna talk about for generations because that's something no one else will ever get to. I don't care how good your team is, is, look how good the Warriors are. And I mean, the one guy that took it away from them is the guy that's fighting with him, right? Like LeBron stopped the greatest team in history from winning a championship. Like that's something that no other person can ever do, in my opinion. Uh, the only other person we can think of is maybe Michael, but even I don't believe Michael would have beat them with that's, the squad. But the, see, but that's the thing that we're talking about eras, we're talking about talent. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like and, every era is different. And look at right? Kobe. Like Kobe had his Kobe had his share, but you know, he still he came out with five. I yeah. wish he got those two though. No, he got he got two as a leader, and he got three as a. No, I said I wish he got those other two though. It would have been nice, but got... but his his he, he, listen, Kobe in my opinion is a top five player in terms of skill. And understanding an IQ of the game, right? Like him, and that LeBron. Mentality, that's what it is. Like honestly, in my opinion, like in a one-on-one game, I'm taking Kobe over MJ. I think people if I think I'm crazy, no, but I, would too. I think Kobe's a more skilled player offensively than MJ, and he can hit a three better than MJ. So like Kobe would survive in this era that we're in now, but MJ he would still dominate, but he'll dominate how Giannis is because Giannis doesn't have a jump shot. And look at him. Like, he's no, dominating like, based but, on these 6'10". Michael had a shot. Michael had a little bit of a jumper, but he had no knockdown three. Like, nowadays, like, you shoot a mid-range. Teams are like, okay, shoot a mid-range. We'll shoot a three, and we'll shoot, you know, threes after, like, five possessions. You shoot your twos, we'll tell you who's going to be winning after those five possessions. Oh, so, I mean, MJ's a great player. In this era, he is the king. He is the GOAT. No man in that era is close. The only person, in my opinion, in my heart, I know would be close is Reggie. But he never got that recognition because he was on a team that was... You know, kind of like choke, choke. Yeah, that, that, that sucks for Reggie. That sucks for Reggie. But Reggie did his thing. Right, so, I mean, at the end of the day, I know we're going to always, you know, this is something that a lot of people would probably say, you know, you can't have this, this will never be answered. No, we'll never answer but, that. But, you know, you know what, I'll say this, uh, Kay, at least we were alive to see this. Like, I, I yeah. was around to see MJ, yeah. and all the, like, old, older heads have told me, oh, like, MJ, he was, he was sick, this and that. Now, I can tell, like, the younger generation, like, yo, like, when LeBron played... LeBron played, like, the, yeah. the 2018 uh, playoffs was one of the craziest that was That was crazy, yeah. I was like, this guy is just out of his mind. Oh, like, my gosh. Just, it was it was legendary. And, you know, I'm, again, like you said, we're both grateful that we got a chance to see, you know, guys that were great uh, go at it for a couple of years, Kobe, LeBron. And there's some guys now that I think are going to be great, too. But uh, I just want to go over this poll that I did on March 9th. Um, you know, just, you know, for fun, you know, not for a podcast or anything. But uh, we, I pretty much asked, in your opinion, who is the better player, LeBron or Michael Jordan, on my Instagram. And MJ1 kind of cheesed me, well, but it's it whatever. It was 68 to 32 MJ. In my opinion, and sorry to some of my followers out there, but I think y'all just say that because y'all like his shoes. And I know some of y'all have said that. So I get it. MJ has the better shoes. He has, you know, he clearly had the better career, but that's okay. I can live with that. LeBron has done some great things. He beat the greatest team ever. To me, that already solidified him as the next, the guy that people have to catch now. He is the standard now. Um, okay, so getting into our next, uh, next topic here that we have. It just came out today. Um, it's on Drake, Mr. OVO Man. Uh, today, it's been announced that the formal name Bio Steel uh, Training Center is now changed to the OVO Athletic Training Center uh, da- uh, in downtown Toronto. This is a big move for Toronto as it shows that clearly Drake has a bigger influence with us than we thought. Um, Derwin, to ask this question, do you think Drake's going to be the owner in the next 10 years for the Raptors? Oh, facts. Well, why would he be? Like, uh, like if, Emma, if he could find a way to work out with MLSE, like, 
He'll take that team, no problem. I think right now he's trying to buy it, but they're not having it. <laughs> no, that makes sense. You know, I see, they, they like their money, right? I mean, I don't blame y'all. Y'all doing a good job owning the team as well. Yeah. But, you know, it, I think with Drake being an owner, I think what would help the Raptors is in free agency. We are in a market where, yes, we're a big city. Uh, yes, we're very multicultural. Yes, we're, we're not. Very... We're not no gem anymore. Everybody knows about Toronto. Right? Yeah, everyone knows about Toronto. Yo, yo, LeBron, yo, Danny Green, all those men come to Toronto. They turn off their caravan, and you know that they like turning up here. You know, they they like all the things be going here. You know, it also helps that you know <coughs> guns just legal in this country. But um, honestly, Toronto's just that market that people are missing out, fam. And honestly, Drake, he, I think he needs to be owner next year. I like, don't. I don't know about next year. No, it's that gotta be next be, year. That may be a little stretch for him too, but like it, maybe, it, maybe like when he's like honestly, the next ten years, somewhere in the next ten years, we could see that happening. Yeah, like, I, I mean, but that, the, but the big step is that he didn't like he got the BioSteel Center to be like. That is true, and it kind of shows his influence. But I, I think that he should be what Drake. I mean, not Drake. Sorry, Jay Z was. Jay Z. Look what he did for the Brooklyn Nets, right? He came as the owner. They made moves. Yes, they didn't win a championship. And yes, they had a little stretch of struggling. But he at least helped push to have a team there. He at least kind of pushed to set the culture out there. So so you're saying Drake hasn't done that for the Raptors? Drake's done that. But imagine from an ownership perspective now. Like, imagine him at that level where he can actually make decisions but, on that franchise. Where it's like, you know what? Let's go get this free agent and actually let's do, go about it this way. Maybe he has something in his brain that... We're, we're missing out on. Maybe something that the, the, the owners now, they, they don't have yet. I'd like to just add to this that July 6, 2017, Sun Life Financial became their actor sponsor. But it was a three-year deal. So next year, you could see the OVO logo on the actor's jersey. Yeah, that's facts. That would be crazy. That would be, that would be really that would crazy. Johnny yeah. with the stats right there. That's our, that's our producer right there, Johnson. The GOAT. Yes, yes. Thank you for everything you do. And everything we're gonna be doing going forward, but um, yeah, like Durham, what do you what do you what do you think on that? You think that like, you think that be a game changer? The fact that Drake came out of the city and now he's doing such big things for the city. I know he doesn't live here, but like, why would you with this whole thing? Right? <laughs> Come back only for Raptors playoffs. I mean, that that make that makes sense. I I, I mean, that's I guess, what it is. That's why that's like, he doesn't want to be older because he can only come here for Raptors playoff games. Well, I mean, if he was owner, this guy would get, like, any game he wants to. And he got to be the guy that holds the trophy to the Raptors. I mean, that, that puts your legacy. Drake, if you're hearing that, your legacy to, like, oh, Jay-Z, who you? Who you? <laughs> you know what I mean? But honestly, fam, I, I think with that whole idea of Drake just being involved is a big thing for Toronto. Um, the fact that his logo could be on the jersey, I think that might be a little bit too much. In my opinion. No, no. I, I, like, if, unless we're, I mean, we, we still have his third jersey, so, like, like our no, and, and city jersey and, and still his, like, And that's it, but the players, the one thing the players don't like in this league is they don't like the slave mentality, and as much as they fuck with Drake, does anyone really want to be in a situation where it's like, Drake's my master? Like, Drake's my boss. Yeah, that's cool, but, like, now Drake has influence on everything in his franchise, and you already see with the Knicks with James Dolan and how he gets on. What if Drake ends up being a guy like that? That's going to end up hurting the franchise. Because with James Dolan, I'm sorry, Knicks and my sister, who's a very big Knicks fan, y'all ain't getting KD with James Dolan there. It's not happening. So with Drake, I think with him being... Better know what can happen. I don't like that move. We'll talk about that another time. But I don't know. I think with Drake being an owner is big. But I just hope when he comes an owner, a little bit less influence with your brand and more focus on the actual brand, which is the Toronto Raptors. Um... We got our third topic here that we can talk about, and I think it's it's my favorite topic, and I know you Definitely love my the favorite topic. tournament. Oh, the greatest tournament in the world. Sorry, World Cup, but March Madness. March Madness is going to start March 21st, and I cannot wait to see Zion and RJ go at it against the whole field. I cannot wait to see them. So, Coach Durbin, all right, if you are in this tournament, and I hope you know your team, because I know you do, what school would you go with or pick to kind of see that give Duke the most challenge and probably have a chance to make a run? Nobody. No Damn. school. Duke. Damn. Like, look, at, look, at their, look at their roster. Have we, ever, have we ever seen this in college basketball? Literally three out of the top five picks are on one team. Forget about that. Forget about it. Damn. 
Damn. I don't Honestly, know. Honestly, like, there, there's... Obviously, that's what March Madness is, though. Like, there could be some... Some crazy upsets. Like, look what uh, uh, Loyola Chicago did last year, you know? Like, yeah, every team has that magical run, so... That's true. It's that's very true. possible that you get upset even before, like, Final Four, so... We'll see. What about you? What about you? Who do you think... Yo, man, like... I had to, I had to think about this tough, because I know the NCAA has its upsets, but no team actually wins it as an upset. Um, from watching a couple of the other teams, teams I, I really like is like Virginia. Um, I like Arizona State. Yes, to the French boy out there. I can't see your name properly, but you lit. Um, but I like Arizona State to make a little bit of a run. But I honestly, I'm going to pick Gonzaga, mainly because of the fact that they already got into the heads of Duke. And yes, Duke is going to look to come back at them. But Arizona, I mean, not Arizona, Gonzaga put them in their place. Like Gonzaga came into that game that they had early in the year, that tournament out in Hawaii, which was pretty lit, and legit walked into that gym in a mentality like, we know how nice you guys are, but like, it's not happening today. I, I don't think Duke came in with the right mentality. Like, well, Duke realized how good Gonzaga was, it's just, they didn't come with the mentality that Gonzaga came, and like, you saw it happen, like, sometimes, you come with that mindset as a as players, you come with that mindset, all, that's all you really need, you play with that energy throughout for 48 minutes, and that's all. That's really all. That's what you need to to help win, and that's what Gonzaga did. But I'm telling you right now, if Duke and Gonzaga face in the in March Madness, I don't know. Like Duke's gonna come with that mindset to. We know what they're capable of. It's, it's true, but so like, we're gonna we're gonna come out ready. But like, Gonzaga's got too much length that can go with this team. Like that's the thing. Duke's had an advantage on everyone. They're more athletic, and they got the length. Gonzaga has those things on their team. Maybe not that super strength of Zion, obviously. But I think they got that mental edge of understanding that, like, yo, we can ball up these guys. Yes, they're going to come at us, but it's no different. We're a top team. Even though they did lose their uh, their conference championship, which was unfortunate. But I think that Gonzaga will make a comeback. I think it's their time. If they've been a good program for the last 15 years, in my opinion. They've been balling. They've been looking for a chance to go out there and win like Villanova has. I, 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 I say Gonzaga's giving it to Duke. The Zion's great, but that knee injury, to me, I understand that he's there for his team, but as a player myself, we all know when you get injured, you do not like playing aggressive right off the bat because you're in your head thinking right away, yo, my knee can snap. Like, my knee could go out once again, so let me baby steps. And, yes, he'll probably get a couple games in the ACC tournament, but I, I, I don't know. I'm going to go Gonzaga to beat them. Who knows? I think my opinion might change who's going to win once I actually see who gets in the tournament this Sunday. On, uh, I can't remember, what's the channel again? C- 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 CBS? I don't know yeah, what's the CBS, channel. CBS. CBS. Yeah. Y'all need to start coming with TSN with that nonsense. I'm pretty sure it's not TSN too. Well, yeah, but we, we need to host that. I don't care that's in America. I want to host that in our country. I know I'm a true Canadian. Yes, but anyways. Um, no, but it, it would be really dope if we can, uh, you know, if we can get a chance to see who gets in and then actually make that decision on our next show and, you know, really see who's going to go at it and make our brackets. Yeah, which we really our brackets next week. So and I know Johnny's going to make a bracket. He has no choice over there. And we'll see who's going to end up having the best uh, finish at the end of the tournament. We should we should definitely put somebody on there between the three of us at least. Yeah. <laughs> Reagan writes for extra step, I'll tell you that. No, that is true. That is, yeah, I know. Oh, Did you uh, end up getting any questions? I'm just question here. Coach Drummond ask you this. How good do you think the Raptors can be in the playoffs? Honestly, for Raptors, it's a defensive mindset. The Raptors can be one of the best defensive teams to ever play the year of basketball. They just need to have that mindset right away on the court. When you when they wait when they when they come off uh, sleepy in like beginning of games, they're gonna give against Houston, Cleveland, they just can't find their legs at defense, but if you come in Play that one minute. You play with the high defensive intensity that they need until 48 minutes. That's all the Raptors need this season. True, true. Honestly, I think the Raptors, they, they, they just need to play good defense. Trust their teammates. Kawhi's just got to be ready to go and hoop. You already know. We we, we going to win this year, in my opinion. I think I think, I think finals it. is, uh, you know, at least, it's at least. Kawhi, I want to see what you did for San Antonio that year for that asshole came and bust up your ankle, all right? So be, be ready to go. So the next question here that was really great, uh, the other question I was like, all right, we can't help you with, um, but it was how do you stay motivated? So I'm assuming this is as an athlete or coach or at any level. Yeah. Um, do you want to take this one first? Or? Uh, you, you try. Um, I guess ways I stay motivated is I try to stay hungry. I try to put a chip on my shoulder with everything I do. I try to, I guess in a way, I, Michael used to do it himself. I know we're bringing up Michael Jordan again. That's okay. He used to try to find a, 
something to kind of, you know, push him to kind of say, like, you know what, like, the world's against me, I need to prove the world wrong, and that's what I try to do, I try to tell myself, yo, I, I just, I want to be hungry for it, I, I want it, I, I want to be the best at it, so I try to motivate myself like that, and if I find someone better, I respect them, but I just say, you know, I want to be better than you. Honestly, motivation is, is a mindset, if you're not motivated in life, then you're not going to be motivated to do anything else. Facts. If you want that motivation, it's gonna come. Hey, if I want to be a good athlete or a coach or whatever's on that list, I gotta come in, work on that, work on the skills for that, and then that's how you stay motivated. You keep you keep working harder on it. You keep getting better at it, and that's your motivation. Boom, goes doing the set best for y'all. So, better. Right one now. more question. Oh, we got a couple more questions. We got we got. Okay, I guess it's one because he asked it twice. Okay, so our last question it's from for this episode. It's, it's Nitten, by the way. So, oh. yeah, yeah. Hi, Nitten. He's one of our guards on our, our high school team we coach. Um, when is it too late for basketball? Now, I'm going to assume that you're asking this in terms of being a player at a high level. Um, or is he asking this, <laughs> when is your age to, like, to say... When, you, when is it ever too late? Coach, do you want to... Get this one first, or we should what both get it? it. I think we got the same answer for this. I think you should try. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll say it like this: it's it's tough when you when you get older and if you're not at a high level to kind of be like motivated to say like, oh, I, I want to keep pushing to be like a top player or something like that. But it's never too late to be basketball. Oh God, like it really isn't. Like you could Dennis Rodman himself was a guy that played junior or community college in the states, and. You know, he worked his way up from there to getting onto the Detroit Pistons. And he did that when he was like 25, I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure if that's true. But, you know, it's never too late. You just have to stay motivated and stay focused. And you just got to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? If you really want something, like we said earlier, you just got to discipline yourself to say, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to get there. Like, it's not too late for you, my dude. Like, if that's what you have to be self or a friend, um, just let them know, like, yo, like, keep pushing. Don't ever give up. If you love basketball, I always love saying this. If you love basketball, I love you back. But you gotta love it. Just put in the work. That's it. I've never heard of any athlete or anybody in life that says if they don't put in the work, they'll, they'll see results. Like that's just how life is. If you want to see results, you gotta put in the work. That's it. I yeah. think that's all the time we have. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's that. So that's our first episode of Extra Step. Uh, uh, thank you all for watching. Um, please leave your comments. Below and let us and know how we do. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us subscribe. Don't don't make me angry. You don't want me to get angry with you, you know. <laughs> so follow us on Instagram and if you have any questions ever, please ask us. Hit us we, up. We and we'll, I'll definitely ask it on the show. Oh yeah, for sure. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon.